There is something of a win for the Republicans. After many, many, uh, lots and lots of dealings, the Senate Banking Committee has passed a... Uh, uh, they've changed some of the onerous details of the Dodd-Frank rules, the financial mm -hmm. reform. Right. Senator John Tester, Democrat, is joining us now. Uh, Mr. Senator, um, I don't think that, uh, Hillary, that Elizabeth Warren is going to be much in favor of this loosening of the reins on regional banks. And you're a Democrat, too. What do you say? Well, I think that, uh, you know, we, we put the proposal out yesterday. The, the language will be out probably tomorrow. But, uh, uh, look, there's going to be folks that say we went too far, and there's going to be folks that say we didn't go far enough. Uh, this, this steward is a negotiated agreement, and I think it's a good agreement, especially for our community banks and the regional yeah. banks. From my personal experience, the community banks and the regional banks are cheering you on loudly and very clearly because they bore the brunt of Dodd-Frank. They're the ones who couldn't afford this gigantic oversight apparatus which was imposed on everybody and shouldn't have been imposed on them. So we've got the change coming, right? Yeah, well, I hope so. I mean, I think the, the key is going to be uh, uh, we've got nine, uh, nine Demo eight Democrats and an independent that have signed on the Velasco sponsorship, so it's, it's filibuster proof. Now the time, you know, is to, is to get it out of committee, get it to the floor, and hopefully vote sure. on it. But, but, the, but the bottom line is this, and, and this is really true. Uh, there's, uh, community banks have been under a lot of pressures, and so have the regional banks. And I think this is going to add some common sense regulation so that they go out and help build the economy, uh, you know, allow people to have the money available to buy homes and allow entrepreneurs to start businesses and existing businesses to expand. So okay. I think it's good for our economy. I think it's good for jobs. Now, I want to ask you about the tax cuts or the tax package, I should really call it, coming out of the Senate, uh, when it does come out of the Senate. I, I'm, I'm sure you know the broad outlines on it. Tax cut for the middle class, tax cut for business. Uh, the 1% will actually pay more in taxes. Now, you're a Democrat. I figure you've got to be a, pretty much a centrist Democrat. Could you vote for this? Well, we'll see what the final product is. As you know, right now, Stuart, it's being marked up in the know, Finance but Committee. You know the rough but, outlines. I, I'm but, sorry but, to interrupt you, but you know the rough outlines. You, you could be the 51st vote yes, couldn't you? Because if the well, Republicans get 50 votes, you know you're safe. You know that you as a Democrat can vote for it. You could be vote number 51. Will you be? I, I could be. Uh, I will tell you that there are some things that concern me about sure. it. Adding a trillion and a half to the debt, uh, making sure that really does help build the middle class because I think it's, it's really, really important moving forward. So I, I want to reserve judgment till, till we see the but final don't, product don't you that believe, comes out. Do, do you but, believe but in I, dynamic scoring? You say that it'll add a, million, a trillion and a half to the debt. That ignores the idea that tax cuts create growth, which creates more revenue to the central government. Well, uh, l let me give you a, let me give you my perspective. Is it could it could increase it? It could increase the economy to pay for itself. But we're going to do some research to find out where it's at on that. I do not believe in dynamic scoring. I think that that's it's smoke and mirrors. But that aside, just let me say this, Stuart. Number one, you need more than one Democrat if you're going to have a bipartisan bill that really puts tax policy up for the folks. It should be a true bipartisan bill. One Democrat does not make it a bipartisan Joe Man bill. Joe Manchin this, this, would join you. Joe Manchin? What? Claire well, I mean, I mean, the truth Are is, you that, camp? well, I don't know who's going to be on the bill in the end. I may be on the bill in the end. We've got to look and see what it does. But in the end, I'm going to tell you that, you know, we haven't done tax reform in three decades. Yep. We didn't get public input on this process. We haven't had a normal hearing process. When Max Baucus did tax reform, when he tried to do tax reform, he got public input for a year. Him and Camp did before they even came up with a proposal. So the, the process is somewhat flawed from the beginning, but we're going to put that aside. Okay. Okay. I think in the, in the end, we've got to see what it does for taxpayers. We've got, to, we've got to make sure that it's equitable. We've got to make sure that it does, in fact, going to grow the middle class. And we've got to make sure we don't saddle our kids with a whole bunch of debt. When the debt comes, we'll be co I'm sorry, when the vote comes, we'll be covering it. And we're looking for vote number 51 in favor from Democrat John Tester. And we <laughs> firmly expect it to be there. Good Mr. To Senator, with you, Stuart. Thank, thank you, you so much for being with us. I do appreciate it, sir. Seriously.